to Charity Village Connects. Today we're celebrating the 2023 winners of the Charity Village National Awards. Joining me is Shannon Kasky, Director of Development at the Darling Home for Kids and the winner of Best Individual Fundraising Professional Award. Congratulations and welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much, Mary. I'm happy to be here with you today. So I wonder if you could start by telling us about your organization and what you learned about how you got nominated for this award by the nominator. Absolutely. So I work for a really special place called the Darling Home for Kids, and we're the only organization of our kind in Ontario. We work specifically with a very special pediatric population of children who are classified as medically complex. And, and what medically complex means is that our children uh, rely on technology for daily living, uh, as well as an intensive nurse of care. So they have a variety of conditions. Most of our children are in wheelchairs and members of the deafblind community, uh, and they require really intensive medical support. So we provide a haven on 77 acres on the Niagara Escarpment in Milton. Um, these children can come and enjoy activities that are unavailable to them elsewhere in the community. We have a therapeutic adapted playground. We offer music therapy, recreation therapy, pet therapy, and programs such as that. Uh, our facility is about 25,000 square feet. Um, and the programs that they can participate in are, are respite programming, where care parents and caregivers can take a much needed break from the demands of 24 caregiving for these special children. And children can come and stay with us for a few days or a week at a time. We also offer a residential program. So for children whose medical needs are so significant that they can't stay in a home environment, um, but not quite acute enough to be in a hospital, they can come and stay with us. And they'll stay with us for all the years of their lives while their parents and caregivers are still very much a part of their care plans. We also offer a hospice palliative program for children that are at the end of life. And, and what that means for our organization with all three of these programs is that we are often with these families when these children are first diagnosed all the way until their final day. So we play a very special role in these children's lives. We have families who access care at our facility from all over Ontario. Uh, currently, we have a child with us from a very far northern community. Um, and it's important to us. The work we do is really important to us. And I've been with this organization for about five and a half years now. Uh, it's been just an absolute pleasure from the moment I first walked in the door. Um, and what I've come to learn about this nomination is uh, it was quite a surprise when I first found out that I was a finalist when I got the email. I, I, I almost thought it was a junk email because I had no idea it was coming. And uh, it turns out that my team, my wonderful development team, found out about these awards and they brought it forward to my incredible CEO. Uh, they thought I was deserving and, and she did as well. So um, when I got the nomination, I sent her a quick note because I was sure she probably had something to do with it. Uh, she's an amazing human who has been with the organization for over 20 years and just a supportive leader. and. Uh, I'm so grateful to have this recognition, both from Charity Village as well as, as the people that I work with, because uh, it truly is an honor to do what I do uh, day in and day out and make a difference for these children. It sounds like incredible work that uh, your organization is doing that is so critical and, and so, um, I'm sure, appreciated by the families and, and the children. Um, what do you think made your nomination stand out? If I had to guess, knowing my CEO, I'm sure she put uh, a lot of effort into it as she does with all things. I think that I've really been able to move the needle when it comes to the work that we're doing at the Darling Home for Kids. So when I started, um, you know, there were some things that they, they already did quite successfully. Uh, they, the charity started in 1995 and officially opened their doors in 2004. They've gone through two smaller capital expansions. Um, one of the pieces I felt was really missing from the program, their overall development program, was a major gift program. It had some success, but there wasn't really a strategy or the right tactics around that to really develop that and engage donors who had the capacity to really move the needle and make some cornerstone investments into the home. So within the first year that I actually started there, I was able to develop a lot of those fundraising relationships and donor relationships 
um, to such success actually that we had donors come forward who wanted to do something very large scale for our organization. We were bursting at the seams. We are. We've had wait lists for programs. We do have a desire to grow. And so we launched our, our most ambitious capital campaign in the history of the home with uh, a couple of these incredible donors really at the forefront of it in the very supportive board of directors. Um, and within, and we launched the capital campaign right at the start of the pandemic. It was March of 2020. Um, so we were nervous. We were nervous <laughs> doing a public launch at that time, but we had such strong support from our donors and volunteers that, uh, you know, on a goal of 6.5 million, which was by far the most the home had ever tried to raise, we, able, we were able to raise about 7.25 million. Uh, exceeded our goal. Um, and that was just within the first two years of my, my time with the organization. And I, I think that sort of getting out of the gate and doing things that were really impactful, I think, was able to really advance the care and, and the level of service that we can provide. Um, as I said, I've worked with so, so many amazing people and uh, I think really bringing them together in the spirit of our cause and wanting to make a difference and knowing that there's more we can do has certainly been very beneficial to our success and my success as a fundraiser. Um, since that time, we've developed a really robust annual giving program. Um, you know, we have a great signature event portfolio as well as working with lots of community partners and third party events. And all of that coming into play, we've dramatically increased our revenue over the past uh, five years, which is just truly amazing. Extraordinary accomplishment, especially in these really tough times, really, uh, really, it's inspiring to hear your story. I'd love to know what being named a finalist and ultimately a winner for this award meant to you and ultimately your organization. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been in fundraising for about 12 years now, and I, I should say officially in fundraising for over 12 years now. I think, I think I wrote my first proposal actually when I was about six or seven years old. I was trying to get my aunt and uncle to, to buy an air conditioner because I didn't want to sleep over there anymore because I didn't have an air conditioner. It was too hot. And ever since then, there was something about my nature, my characteristics, where I was good at speaking to people in a compelling way and, and, and bringing people on board to see a certain vision. And uh, throughout university, I did a lot with volunteering and fundraising and throughout high school. So coming into the field officially was just really rewarding for me. I've worked in different organizations. I've worked in large care national organizations, at hospital foundations. Um, it's, it, and in every role I've had, it's really been an honor to make an impact. And fundraising isn't the easiest. It's a grind and it can be challenging. And as you've mentioned, the economy, you know, is, especially over the last couple of years, there's new challenges that come up and um, it's a lot of, chasing at times a lot of a grind like I said and I think the end of the day you know you're not going to see your name in bright lights as a fundraiser your person sort of behind the scenes you've got these incredible amazing donors who are making the impact you have these incredible people on the program delivery and service delivery side and um, you know your amazing beneficiaries who, who receive all this great care so I think as a fundraiser it's it was just so amazing to to be recognized in this degree because we do kind of pull the strings on the backside of things, but we're not often on, on the red carpet with it. So truly inspirational. Um, I think one of the most rewarding parts of this process was that my my team and my CEO really felt that that I deserved this this award and to be nominated and took the time to do something like that. And I'm just so grateful for Ch to Charity Village for that recognition. I think there's just so many incredible people working in the sector all across Canada, all across the world. And it's so nice to be able to really bring them forward into the light and congratulate them on that important work. Well, at Charity Village, we're hoping to uh, provide you an opportunity to uh, shine the light and bright lights uh, around your name as the winner of the Best uh, Fundraising Professional Award this year. Um, congratulations and so well-deserved and what wonderful work your organization does. And I'm delighted to hear that um, our award uh, makes a difference in terms of um, your own sort of professional experience and just knowing the incredible impact that you're making. And so congratulations. Um, thank you for your excellent work. Thank you so much, Mary. I really continue to be humbled and grateful. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure.